So now we are gonna explore the wild fauna, or is it flora? The wild flora of Asturian, Spain. And we go into the vegetable garden, but instead for the uh, tamed, domesticated vegetables, we are going for the wild ones. This is Rumex, uh, one kind of Rumex, there are several of them and they are all edible. Most people know the, the sorrel, the, the sour one, you can eat for salad, but all the other Rumexes you can eat too, but they are uh, less sour than the, the ones we know. And they grow everywhere, mostly on compacted soil because they have a deep strong root. And most people regard them as a pest because they spread on these soils easily and uh, the animals don't eat them, but you can eat it. <laughs> so, so this is a really nice salad bed. I mean, I don't mean the lettuce, I mean the chickweed in between and also this here, this is Amaranthus. Amarant. It's a very common garden weed you find very often and you always just pick the the top of the plant because it's the, the softest part and also the youngest part and then of course you get the chickweed. Chickweed is also a very common garden plant and here it grows like salad, it's that's um, paradise. You can just cut it very easily. You can harvest in a short time a lot of salad like this. And I also just picked the top of the chickweed. And the good thing about chickweed is. If you harvest it regularly, um, you can come back every week and it lasts the whole season. You will always have fresh, fresh uh, parts to pick. If you don't harvest it regularly, then at some point it grows too long and too strong. You can't really eat it anymore and then it's, it's over. You can't harvest this plant anymore. So it's important to harvest regularly and to eat it regularly. And then, what's this? Is this another one? And then there is a malva. There are lots of different malvas you can find throughout Europe. And they're all edible and they're all really nice in taste. Really nice, soft, smooth taste. And you can eat the whole plant, the flowers, the leaves. And this is really nice to find. And you find malvas also everywhere. They're very common. Can you show it again? The malva? No, this is not a good leaf. So what else we got? Then we got the nettle. I think the Latin name is Lamium. This is the purple nettle. With the purple little flowers you also find white nettles and other kinds of nettles. All these nettles are edible, edible even the stinging nettle. But the stinging nettle I wouldn't put into salad but um, you can make green smoothie with the stinging nettle or just crush the, the stinging hairs somehow and then you can also eat it raw or you cook it as spinach. 
You can eat all of these herbs either raw as a salad or you cook it as a spinach or like spinach. This is a kind of thistle, a south thistle I call it, and it's not so prickly and you can, can eat it, but it has a very special taste. And this is slightly bitter at the moment, so I don't um, take it now for salad, but if there's nothing else you can eat it. It's, um, it's not one of the nice ones, but it's edible. A lot of these plants are edible, but might not taste nice so you for salad you just pick the, the ones that taste very nice like chickweed okay it's gone ah there's another mile down This is also a malva, a wild one. It often grows beside the paths. You find it beside roads and paths. It has nice small purple flowers and it's really nice mild taste. Oh, that's another thing. Another thing you can eat from the garden, the, the beetroot, you can also eat the leaves and they make for nice color in a salad. And they taste just like the beetroot itself. But they are also very nutritious and edible. Most people throw them away. Sow thistle again. You can recognize it with this white juice. It's coming out. And has a very special taste. And you have to try it. Some are bitter, some are not so bitter. This is not so bitter, so I collect some of the leaves for our salad today. And another nice thing is this. This is dandelion. You see the leaves here? The leaves are often quite bitter. And they are not so bitter before it starts flowering. You can always try if it's too bitter for salad or not. This is just flowering, so this is okay from the taste. You can also pick some of the leaves. But I always just pick the the younger, fresher ones. But the most um, delicious thing with the dandelion is, is the actually is the flower. Because it's not just bitter but also sweet from the pollen. And it's very nice to eat. Very nice mild salad plant. It's called Shepherd's Purse or Tlapsi Arvense is the Latin name and it's very mild. It looks similar to the untrained eyes like uh, dandelion but it's very mild in taste and it has this typical seed bulbs that looks like like a purse of a shepherd. That's where the name comes from. And as a child I always went for the seeds and just didn't know that you can eat the whole plant like with so many others we pick here. Here it started to, to make the seeds. It's too small to recognize. But you might recognize the pattern, how it grows. And here there are these little heart-shaped seed bulbs that gives it the name.
This is Achillea millefolium from the flowers. Usually you make tea, but the flowers are too bitter to eat for salad, but the leaves are quite nice for salad. They have a slightly mushroomy champignon-like taste. And you you always just pick the the fresher, not so dark leaves. It's easier and nicer to eat. This is quite small, usually they also have bigger leaves. So it's easier to collect, but just for show we also collect the small ones here. Let's unfold in. Fall in one place. This is also a really nice hot tasting plant, Nasturtium or Capucina Kresse in German. Uh, with really nice colorful flowers and you see not just we like this also little caterpillar so we leave this caterpillar here and around and then mm, yummy and also the leaves are very nice and we are going to make a pesto out of this today So the best time of the day to pick your wild herbs is in the morning. In the morning the plants are still fresh and powerful. After midday they become weaker and, and lose more water. So it's best to go when the sun goes up, you pick your herbs. And I usually just pick the, the top of the plants for certain reasons. One is that it's the nicest part to eat. It's fresh, it's young. It's not so strong, so you can really chew it. And another reason is if you cut the top, the growing tip of, of a plant, it will grow other uh, tips um, further down again. So you can come back the next week and harvest again the same plant. So you never cut the whole plant and then it's gone. So you cut just the top of each plant and then you can come back and harvest on and on and on. So, and... I usually take a knife, but you can also just use your fingernails. Doesn't so why matter. pick wild herbs in a garden? The garden is really the best place to pick wild herbs. Um, because there's always free spaces for the wild herbs to, to grow, actually. Because the gardener always hoes the soil or however uh, opens up the soil. So the seeds that are already in the soil can germinate and grow and have the space to grow. So the garden is really the best place to find the, the greatest variety in a garden, more than in a forest or on a meadow. That's why we went in the garden today. And also the garden um, is a place where you, um, where you put your compost. And also in the compost usually you have lots of seeds of lots of different plants. And with the compost you spread the seeds and also you spread the, um, the fertilizer for the seeds. Because there are wild herbs, they grow everywhere, but they grow best in a good fertilized soil, like every other plant. And yes, that's it for that. Anything else? Ah yes, there is something else to say. If you are on a meadow, as I already mentioned, you find less wild herbs because the grass is very competitive. When you look down to the bottom, you see mainly grass and you might find some plants. We also found already in the, in the garden. This is the plantago, plantago lanceolata or plantain in English. We had already in the garden, so we can also pick some more because 
magically all the herbs disappeared. So we need to pick some more. And what else you can find? You also find the rumex. All the plants with deep roots, deep rooting plants with deep strong roots you find also between grasses. But less than in the garden. And this is also a very ah, this is also a very nice plant. It looks similar to dandelion, but it is hairy, as you can see. Dandelion has no little hairs. Dandelion has very smooth skin. And this looks similar, but it's uh, hairy and smooth the corners. And it's not so bitter as dandelion. I don't know the Latin name, I only know the, the German name. Um, the German name is Ferkelkraut literally translates into English in piglet weed because the farmer in Germany at least they used it to feed the little piglets with it. Another thing I was talking about you in the garden is the nettle and this here is the, the stinging nettle. You see the, the very small tiny hairs if they get into your skin it uh, you get a rush so it's it's not good to eat it in a salad but you can either fold the leaves inside and roll it like that and then you can eat it or you put it in a blender together with fruit and make a green a nice green smoothie with it or you somehow crush and break it and then or you cut it very smooth, or you make spinach out of it. It gives a very nice spinach. And another thing you can do with it is put it in cold water for, say, four hours, and you get a nice, lemony, tasty um, lemonade with it. It tastes a little like melon. Very nice. You should try it out. And of course, very nutritious. Uh, stinging nettle has a lot of vitamin C, for instance, more than um, lemons we use usually. So I don't put it in a cellar. Here we have another type of plantain, Plantago major. And you can see the difference to the other one. This is broader leafed, but both are very char characteristically have these parallel ribs. You see them on the back side better. This is only plantain or plantago has this type of um, structure. The others are all more branched as you can see. And this is very nice also in taste. It tastes a little mushroomy earth like really nice taste. This is the, the wild carrot, it's growing wild often and you can also eat the leaves. This is quite old now and you don't find really fresh green leaves anymore, but it's possible to eat these. And they have a nice carroty taste. And you could also from your carrots in the garden of course eat the leaves, you don't have to throw the leaves away. In fact the leaves are the most nutritious part of the carrot has all the vitamins and minerals. The carrot itself it's mainly sugar and water. I don't remember the Latin name of this but this is also a very common meadow plant. It has a really nice taste. And there is a prickly variety and a non-prickly variety. This is the non-prickly and has a much nicer taste. The prickly one doesn't taste really like anything. But this tastes really good. And I think they used this wheat to produce cheese in former times. That's what the name in, in German tells. It's Labkraut. 
I don't know the English or the Latin name, but we will look it up. So we can take some of this. They are very tiny and fiddly, so they don't make, they don't add much mess to the salad, but they add a nice taste. Another thing you find everywhere, another plant, is sizzles. I mean, obviously they're not nice for salad because of their spikes. But you could, for instance, cut off the spice, the spikes, and then you could eat it because all fizzles are edible. So you can just get rid of the spikes. But it's a lot of work, so usually I don't do it, and then you can eat it. So you could try to juice them, for instance, with a juicer, but then it's a very strong juice. But as they are, they are edible. Here we have some clover. This. Uh, might be red or white clover it's hard to tell you can tell with the flower but before that you can just try what it's like usually the, the red clover is not so bitter than the white clover so you can eat all varieties every clover is edible and also the veggies that are related to them Often they taste a little bit like peas, like sweet peas. Just go around and try them. If they are too bitter, don't pick it. But if it's nice, then you can pick them for salad. But it's obviously better to find bigger leaves than that. So it's... So that's just a, a small selection of what we found in the meadow here in Asturias, Spain. Of course there are some other plants and in other places there are different plants. But there is a lot of grass on a meadow and some say you can't eat grass but that's not true. The thing with grass is we can eat it, we can't digest it. That's the difference. If we find ways to process the grass properly, like juicing it, or any other process we might come up with, it uh, would give us a nice other opportunity for nutritious food because in grass there's a lot of vitamins, a lot of, a lot of protein, a lot of minerals. So, yes, we have to find ways to eat grass as well and then the whole meadow is edible. We don't have to um, go and search for the few plants that are growing beside the grass. Uh, what we collected today is uh, Nasturtium Cappuccina. Um, it has a very nice hot taste, 
but tastes also very flowery. It's really nice for for taste in a salad. Then we picked, of course, chickweed, one of the very common garden weeds in gardens around Europe, and it's very nice, mild in taste, has lots of vitamin C. Stop. <laughs> What was this? Half an hour walk? You said it took half an hour walk, take and a one hour like walk. Interviews and interviews and interviews. <laughs> so as long as you disturb us it takes longer. The problem is that he is eating a lot. <laughs> we have to make breaks to, to eat the flowers. I, to check that I what don't. you said is true. No, let, I don't. Let, me, I don't let me read my notes. Let me read Wasn't my notes. me. <laughs> it's not eating, it's something else. <laughs>